Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady with my co-host, JC. Hi. We're here today with a special guest from Tech Rage IT. They help prevent tech rage. We're not going to talk about that today too much. We're going to talk about employee rage uh, just a little bit. <laughs> Erica Martinez-Rose. Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Hi, JC. Thank you for having me. Really excited. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, in this section, we want to talk about um, being prepared. Like, How do you, uh, in order to affect, positively affect employee engagement and, and connection, being prepared is key. Talk to us about how you prepare your new hires so that they are in it to win it throughout their entire new hire period. Sure. So we've been very intentional about letting our even applicants and, and candidates, even before they become an employee, of what our expectations are, what are the performance goals that they have, and how that helps um, with our company goals. So we've been putting together milestones, if you will, um, 30, 60, 90 day milestones that we present to um, candidates that have made it pretty far in the process. Um, because we realize we need to let them know from the beginning what is expected of them. Um, it's their opportunity to ask a lot of questions. It's their opportunity to know um, what what we're expecting from them um, and what we do in return to, to make them successful. Um, it might scare some candidates, um, but at the same time, we'd rather make sure that, that they self uh, deselect themselves if they realize it's just not going to be a good fit and we're not offended by that whatsoever um so we've been setting goals for them that we would then start discussing on a weekly basis um just to see if they're on track off track and then start making um either provide them with additional training um and and, and see where else we can help them but it's just really a good way of, of tracking their progress um because I think the first 90 days will really let them know if they're going to be successful in this role. Um, and we want to be upfront with them. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Uh, you know, I tell everybody, you know, hire slow, just make sure you get the right person and then not hire so slow that somebody else steals them. Right. Because we're all in a super competitive market, but hire slow um, ask all the questions up front that you don't wish, you know, six months from now, oh man, I wish I asked this this candidate that's now an employee this question because I would have ruled them out if I asked them this. And I know, because I know you personally, that you've experienced <laughs> some of the, the growing pains as well, and we all do. So kudos to you for having that, that plan um, so often in that, in that same article that I was mentioning in the earlier section of our podcast from Harvard Business Re Review, it's actually called the surprising power of simply asking coworkers how they're doing. And, you know, you can, for the, our folks that are listening in today, you don't have to be their manager to ask them how they're doing. If you are their manager, supervisor, or a team lead, you should not only be asking them how they're doing, but then going this step further and giving them concrete information on how you perceive they're doing. And then this one's a scary one. Hey, I'm your manager. How am I doing? Ah, that's a hard conversation, right? <laughs> It is, um, you know, are you ever going to get true feedback from them? Um, you never know. Some might be really open and honest. Some might not. Um, but you can start seeing how people, even how they come in in the morning and, and how they are. You know, we had an instance where we can start, we started seeing, um, I don't want to say personality changes, but just enthusiasm changes. Um and you know things were going on in their personal life, which then affected their their performance. But you can start seeing that, even though they're not saying something to you. So just really paying attention to that, which can be really hard in a virtual world. 
Um, so it's, it's that, it's, it's that struggle right now. Absolutely. Do you, um, do you, is your organization use in, what do you use for communication? Are there any tools like technology that you use to make it easier to communicate on the fly with your remote workers and even your in-person workers? So we use Teams. Um, we have different channels. We have one for celebrating successes. Every time we get positive feedback from a client, we'll celebrate as a team. So that's something that everybody sees in the company. Um, and then the technical team has their own support chat. So anybody can um, participate in there when they're having struggles. So it's a collaboration as a team there. Um, we do have, um, you know, in-person um, team bonding as well mm -hmm. that we do. Um, we've had game board game day. Uh, we've had a... a cookie decorating contest. So little things like that, that we do do, um, to keep it fun. Um, but for the most part, it is all teams and, and virtual collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody can start those conversations, check in on each other, even if they're not a manager and then the managers know, which is you mainly, right. <laughs> you, you and your, your, uh, partner saying, Hey, we got to make sure so-and-so is not, not, not uh tuning into this conversation today let's go check what's going on uh erica you'd be surprised how many people just don't do this they go ah, i'll deal with it tomorrow i'll deal with it tomorrow yeah and i think that we've been there too where you just don't want to have those hard conversations or you just um you just want to string along the issue as much as you can and at this point in time, it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help us as a company. It doesn't help our clients. It doesn't help the employees. So we've been really trying to have those check-ins and those conversations early on as possible. You know, it's it's been said that check-ins may not necessarily be the time for argument or even persuasion, according to some articles and research. It's been said that they are time to very simply hear somebody else out even if they're losing their voice and crackling like me. I swear, it's like puberty <laughs> part two, oy vey. But consider acknowledging the point of view of that individual, of that person, or asking them to elaborate if someone says something that you don't understand or agree with. I read that advice. I kind of like that advice. What do you think about that, Erica? Um, you know, being the owner and the top executive of the company, I try to make sure the team's not intimidated at all by me. And I think it helps that I'm not physically in the office um, and I'm not their day-to-day -day manager. Um, so, you know, some people are intimidated when, when I speak to them, but I really try to keep things more on the, the casual side um, and, and try to let them know that I'm always here for them. Um, and, and I do check in and say, how are things going? Um, but again, there's, there's only so much we can do and hopefully they, they see our intentions and trying to stay in contact with them. Um, but there's going to be people that are just never going to be um, upfront about it. And, you know, us as executives and, and leaders, it's really trying to see other, other clues. And, and yeah. Well, and hopefully so you find those clues by the 90 day mark, right? Wendy? Yeah. I mean that, you know, that's ideal, but you know, let, let's talk about that for a second. So I want our listeners to know, you know, in majority of states, the 90 day mark doesn't mean anything except for they may not get unemployment if you fire them. Um, so I try to tell my clients, hey, don't worry about that 90 day mark um, on that thing, because a lot of a lot of people think, oh, well, I got rid of them on day on day 89. So I'm not going to get sued for anything for discrimination or whatever it might be. It's like, no, 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 you're you're still held accountable as an employer. Yeah. to the laws in that first 90 days as you are to 120 days, five years, 10 years. So um, the thing that I do like about the 90 days is that it usually forces, a lack of a better word, encourages companies to come up with at least a 90 day plan. Ideally, it would be a, a plan every year of the person's career, right? Because every single year, every month is important. We need to be profitable and productive and engaged every single day, not just the first 90 days. 
Now, mm-hmm. if you're a smart new hire, you'd be really awesome in the first 90 days, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then then you'd be able to kind of get get left alone a little bit more, except for those positions that uh, don't, you know, that, that need to be uh, supervised closely. I was looking at this one stat here from a, a global culture report in 2022. So it's this year. And it said that research finds that 45% of employees say the number of individuals they regularly interact with at work has decreased significantly over the past year. So this was 2021, 2022, not even the beginning of the pandemic. And 57% of employees said that they engage in fewer social activities at work or after work. And so I really, you know, and then additionally, the last stat I wanted to share there, one in three employees feel disconnected from their leader furthering their isolation and loneliness at work. So again, kudos to you, Erica, for um, Erica and Matt for making sure that, you know, you are doing the right thing and trying your best to feel that everybody is engaged and connected so that they could be super awesome employees and, and wow your clients. With that said, we're going to be right back with our next section. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.